Hey ladies and gentlemen, what up? It's Warmine, and I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for the final wave in Age of Darkness, the final stand. And so, in this game, it really comes down to funneling them in the smallest area that they could attack you, and you have a greater area. But before we get into that, I'm going to show you all the steps I took to get here. So let's start off with the skill tree. Uh, the melee skill tree isn't the most important, but this is just what I did. And here is the archer skill tree. And the most important one is the bomb left because it, it increases your damage by 100%. And then the most important tree is your siege tree. And you're going to want the area effect and pushback because it pushbacks your opponent. And then on top of that, you definitely want the siege stun one because that is the most important one in the game that's probably the first thing you should get in your skill tree um Speak your mind. of course once you get the chance but yeah so area effect is most of effective with uh catapults and uh pushback is most effective with blast dolls in this game i am mostly going uh catapults so i did more on area effect and it's gonna also stun you know the big guys and whatever i'm targeting and stuff like that for the best defense i noticed if you put your stone walls in front of your fire buildings and then you put mobile blast dolls behind them with the ability to stun and push back and then you have these uh, blast style towers and you click this right here and click target strongest they will help you take down the big guys and I just noticed that is the best setup overall. And then on top of that, after behind the Grand Towers, you could have catapults launching and, you know, blasting enemies when they're getting close. So when it comes down to the final wave, what you want to do is find all the narrowest choke points. And the reason is, is you want a bigger circumference so you could have more defense so they can't break your walls closer. And... If you see this here, I have a, just a very narrow pathway right here, and I have a line set up. And that setup isn't like the best, but it was the best on my map option to give a choke point. And I have three waves going to be attacking me in this top right. Another thing you should know is it's the final wave, so just spend all the money you have, but everything outside of your main defensive walls is going to get destroyed anyways. So sell everything you have, um, try to sell things before you sell your workshops and stuff, and make as many units and tower defenses as you possibly can, because when this wave hits, everything is just going to get destroyed. You might have had good walls that held up the horde before, but I'm playing this on veteran, or if you play this on e any difficulty harder than that, you're definitely just going to want to sell things and recruit as much as you possibly can. and. Another thing to consider is when you're recruiting, you're not going to have the option to actually recruit units during the wave because they're going to be destroying all your farms and stuff. And maybe your, your houses are probably near your uh, main capital. But yeah, they're going to be destroying all your farms and stuff. So you're not going to be able really to recruit troops once the fight starts. So try to build and maximize your units before the fight starts. And so, so one of my goals in this video is to teach you how to not have to pause to have success on this final wave. And so what I'm showing you here is I have a bunch of siege equipment, uh, catapults, and don't forget to actually uh, click siege mode on them because they increase the range on it. But what you're going to want to do is have them on assigned groups. Like I have two main defense walls. This is defense wall too. So my catapults are number two here. And then my uh, catapults at the other wall are n number one. So make sure you have stuff assigned. So that way you could just easily click them and tell them where to attack. Our defense is um, under attack. But so yeah, as you see right here, I just click the, the catapults and I click attack this target. And what you're targeting here is their siege equipment. Their siege equipment is what is killing your walls. And also the big guys, but you don't have to worry about the big guys because your uh, grand blast styles are targeting them. So you don't have to worry about their big guys. Just more focus on their siege equipment. Anytime you see these guys like stacking up or anything like that, you're just gonna, you know, wanna 
uh, launch some catapults at them, uh, eliminate them. And, you know, the more you uh, maintain knocking these guys out, the easier the fight will become. Oh, yeah. And as you saw right there, I wasn't really able to hit a lot of them just because I built the wall so far, far back, my uh, catapults weren't able to reach them. But now they are able to reach, so I can actually hold them off better. So see all those things blasting? I'm just clicking them and just making sure my catapults go over there and destroy them. And what you want to do is just, you know, mostly focus on the wall that you're worried about falling just like this one I'm worried about falling because it's not the best defensive position and I got three waves in it um, but this area down here is so good because I have catapults lined up the top right here and they are actually hitting these guys naturally the range guys before they even attack my base so I really don't even have to worry about that that's like ideal perfect setup but as you see right here, it's they're slowly getting closer. But you know, like if I honestly just have my catapult, just keep on aiming in the middle there, because that's where they seem like they're coming. Is they're, they're going to destroy all the range guys before they even reach. And these grand blast styles are shooting the big dudes as they're getting closer too. So this is pretty much the best strategy I've figured out. And I hope the strategy helps you. Um, but yeah, so once again, I got the fire buildings in front. Then the best second thing to put is mobile blast styles behind them. And then you want the grand blast styles behind those guys. And then catapults behind the grand blast style towers. And yeah, this is the most effective way. And then, of course, always have just a bunch of soldiers, you know, ready to take down uh, if a wall falls, which is what you see in this uh, up above all the towers up here. It's just in case my wall falls. But yeah, this one's just, I'm not even worried about it at all. Like, they're barely even reaching over here. But this is an ideal setup where your uh, catapults and towers could attack before they even reach a wall. And as you see, they're getting pretty close to breaching here, but I think I definitely won this fight right here. Um, and, you know, in this campaign, I honestly didn't do that good. So I'm showing you a setup that I'm doing, and I actually struggled the whole match. I, 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 I pretty much was losing, you know, buildings and stuff like that throughout the fight. It, it, was, it, was, it was a nasty fight, but... What I did is I start selling all my workshops and stuff. That way I would have enough resources to build these final walls. And um, how big of a defense you have uh, entirely is up to how fast you progress in this fight. Um, the first things you're going to need, of course, is you know like wood and farms and stuff like that. But what the end game actually comes down to is how much stone and how much iron you have. And you see that the uh, bomb side already walk, wiped them out. And it looks like I have only 2,500 uh, units left. So I'm I'm crushing them right now. Even though they've broke broken through just about all these walls. But you, you can see the horde has like s slowed down. So I've killed the majority of them. Another thing I highly suggest for the end of this game is... To have a bunch of the light towers, um, basically have one next to each of your defenses. Because if your, your units fall under darkness or anything like that, it's really going to demoralize them and make them not as effective. So as you see, I have a tower right here. And, you know, just keeping my, keeping my boys some, you know, light and stuff like that. And, man... Looks like it's down to like 400. And here we are down to the last 300 nightmares. And so I would say this was a huge success because I basically like thought I was going to lose. And I sold all my stone towers uh, before these walls right here just so I'd have enough stone and built to build all these blast dolls here and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I would say that was success. So just keep in mind, uh, you, you could even see the map. 
I didn't even actually explore the most of the map, but you know, I just found a good choke point and with my defensive setup. And here it is, the last couple nightmares. There's five left. I guess there's four just out there in the fields. And yeah, another thing to keep in mind is you're gonna want to either have light towers or um, houses basically in every little shadow least spot in your base. Just, you know, uh, confirm no nightmares will appear in your base, you know, in this final stage. But yeah, uh, there it is. Success, very nice. Looks like I just got to hunt those guys down. Oh, nope. It's doing a cinematic thing. I think that means I did it. Huge success. Uh, and if you haven't played this game, this game is just super fun. I, I love it. It's a good way to spend like three hours or so. Um, but yeah, it's fantastic. Definitely check it out. And here it is. I did it on Veteran. And usually after I beat this campaign, the next thing I'm thinking about is what hero or difficulty should I play it on next? I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, found this video awesome. Please subscribe and throw those likes up and hit the bell. Thank you. And you guys stay awesome. Take care. Bye.